Hello and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. It's good to see you. I'm glad that you're all well and today I'm going to undertake something of a different video to the norm. I usually talk about men's style and self-development and product reviews but today I'm going to have a shave in the woods. Now this goes back to a couple of weeks where I did a, a product review in these woods where I talked about an aftershave balm and in order to facilitate that review I had a bit of a wet shave boiled some water and did it here in the woods. Bit of a wilderness shave, if you will. Well, that elicited some quite interesting responses from people. So I thought I'd take that a step further and have a proper double-edged safety razor shave in the woods, take my time, do it properly, together. And in order to facilitate that, you will see just over my shoulder, I have taken the time to create an outdoor shaving station where I can shave in comfort in the spectacular English countryside in beautiful uh, May weather as it is today. So let's get ahead and do that. First of all, of course, we need some hot water, fundamental ingredient with any shave. So I'm gonna boil some water using my trusty Kelly kettle and, uh, and then I'll get over to the shaving station and we can crack on. See you in a minute. Ah, all right there folks, here we are. So I've set up at my outdoor shaving station and this is designed, I'm staring at the mirror and the camera is right next to the mirror. So if you see me looking this way, it means I'm looking in the mirror. So today I'm just gonna have a normal double-edged safety razor shave, but in the great outdoors. And you know what the outdoors are like? There's always the sound of a chainsaw going in the background. So apologies for that. The peace and quiet of the English countryside as ever. So today, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to have a, a nice shave. I'm going to use, let's have a look. This is my uh, Parker razor. So in my first shaving video, I think I used some cheap old Japanese thing. This is a Parker razor, which I bought off eBay many years ago and has been a stalwart razor for me. I've probably shaved with this for 10 years. It's a chunky old thing, probably about 90 to 100 grams. And it's a twist to open. So you turn the bottom and like a butterfly the top opens up and inside the blade today I think you can see I'm using a Derby extra razor double-edged safety razor and it's quite simple you place it inside there we go just like that yeah just like that pop him onto the bar do him up and then we are ready to shave that's it nice safety razor and I'm going to be using some Tailors of Old Bond Street Rose Shaving Cream. Big fan of mine. I thought I'd use the rose as we're in the outdoors right now and I thought the rose was in keeping with the outdoor environment. And I've used this one a lot over the years. Um, as you can see, not a great deal left in there. And it's got a really floral bouquet, something I, I really enjoy. Uh, and to apply that, I am using a Excelsior Boar Hair Brush. Um, nice little brush. I use this tend to be as a travel brush. I'm just in the process of trying a few synthetic brushes. Typically, I use a Taylor of Old Bond Street Badger brush, um, but I like to try other stuff from time to time. And this little bore one is gonna be my brush for the day. Pleasure for that. Right, so you saw me boiling some water on the Kelly kettle. That water has been poured into this pail. There's about a um, quarter of a liter in there, uh, three quarters of a liter or so pint and a half, two pints. And I'm also going to be using this that stainless steel pan, which comes as part of the pail kit, uh, which I've had for many years for camping purposes. I'm going to use that as my lathering bowl. So I'm going to get my boar's hair brush sort of soaking in there, because as you know, with the brushes, um, they do prefer a little bit of a soak, unlike the synthetic ones that don't need to be pre-soaked. And let's get started. So just going to use my dampened brush which hasn't really been soaking for that long could have done better with that and I'm just going to get some of that that lovely rose shaving foam cream on my brush and I'm just going to use my little container here to whip it up sometimes adding a bit more water just to get it into a bit of a lather ready to go onto the face which would be just lovely and to be honest this Taylor's of old Bond Street stuff it is such good quality that uh, it, you know, that, that rose I've had for about six years, 
It's not one of my favourite ones. Um, I tend to prefer the slightly more traditional men's ones, sandalwood, cedarwood, things like that. Uh, and I've been trying a lot of other brands over the last few years. So I've probably had that rose for many a year. And I've got to say that the scent, the, uh, the scent is still really attacks the senses. It's got rose written all over it. So, just get the face wet. I've got an extra bowl here with some water in because um, I don't want to be dipping my, my brush into the, same, into the same bowl that I'm going to be um, wiping my face with. So now I've built the lather and the lather goes on fantastically when it comes to Taylor's or Bond Street stuff. I mean, it's got to be one of the most consistent performers when it comes to any sort of shaving uh, accoutrement. It is quite simply superb. You know, I don't think I've ever been disappointed by anything I bought from Taylor's. And if you ever find yourself in London and you've got some time and you're walking around the West End, as a chap, you owe it to yourself and your membership of the Chaps Club to pop into Taylor's because it is like a museum of shaving ephemera. You know, there's everything that you could think of and a damn sight more as well. So there we go. Just get that on your face. Now, I love, this is one of the pleasures of shaving with a, a safety razor. The whole, excuse me while I clear the mouth. Um, it is the whole experience of applying the cream and just allowing your face to luxuriate in that sense, uh, the, the scent as well. So now I'm just warming up my razor because as you know, steel always performs better when it's uh, had time to warm up. Nobody wants to put cold steel on their face. And I've just allowed the blade to get a bit warmer and I'm just looking in the mirror. You'll excuse me for not staring at the camera as I do this because the last thing we need is an open vein. So uh, there we go. Now, this Parker razor I've had for a long old time. Uh, bought very cheaply, you know, probably 15 pounds. And I have to say, for the price I paid, it's had awesome service. Uh, it's not one of the big makes. It's not you know your Murka and your Moulet, but uh, truth is, cuts pretty damn good. So for me, the actual shaving experience is one of life's joys. I know a lot of men will say, you know, it's a bind, it's a chore, and yeah, it is. Nobody really likes drawing a razor over their face ordinarily and nobody definitely likes drawing a cartridge razor over their face that is a chore not a joy and the secret to anything which is challenging and unpleasant to do is to turn it into an experience that's enjoyable because as you know anything which is fun is not a chore I've always thought that if you can find a job that you enjoy doing. It's not a job, it's a pleasure. And uh, you start getting paid for your pleasure. I've yet to find such a job yet, myself, but we keep, we keep trying. Now, I have to say, when you're outdoors and you're looking into a large mirror as I am right now, with natural sunlight, it's May here in the UK, it's, um, it's just coming up to four in the afternoon. So I've got two days of stubble on the face. I'm staring at myself in natural light in a large mirror and it's it's quite brutal actually because normally you only see yourself in that in unnatural light in your you know your bathroom or whatever and you're staring as you do that in quite often not the best environment whereas here with full natural light bathing my face I can actually say I can see practically every bristle on my face and uh, that is a joy when it comes to getting it off. The only downside, of course, is that when you're in the elements, as I am now, uh, exposed to a nice breeze and the warmth of the sun, I noticed that the, the shaving cream has dried very quickly on my face, so I whipped through that. That was my first pass. And you'll notice I shave downwards on the upper half of my face and upwards on the lower half of my face with the grain and to a degree against the grain. It's different for everyone. That's just a way that I have found to get best use out of my, my shaving time. 
one. So back to my brush. I'm going to add a touch more water to that because actually, because it dried so quickly on the face, I think if I add a bit more fluid, it'll be a bit easier if I add a bit more water for my second pass. So I'm going to lather up for my second pass and uh, hopefully we'll just whip over that again. And oh god, that, that rose fragrance from the Taylor's own Bond Street. It's quite powerful uh, and it's it's not a, a fragrance that you, you encounter all the time in, in men's shaving materials because uh, it's, it's kind of effeminate, I guess, the rose. It reminds me, I don't know if anybody likes Angel Delight, but of course one of their flavours of Angel Delight, what am I talking about? Turkish Delight. Uh, Turkish Delight has a rose flavour amongst other ones, but Turkish, you know, the, the traditional fries Turkish Delight, confectionery Turkish Delight that I grew up with was actually um, rose flavour. And it reminds me of that to a degree. Okay, so second pass now. Now second pass for me, I don't normally shave upwards against the grain on the upper half of my face. I shave across the grain. So I like to use my razor and I know it's working because I can hear the bristles being cut as I draw that razor over. There we go. And you know, you can sense the cleanliness of that shave, the pleasure that comes from it. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I like to do my my face in hemispheres, northern hemisphere above the chin, southern hemisphere below. So just going over that area now, there we go, trying to keep it as smooth and using as little downward pressure on the razor as one can, because the razor, quite a heavy razor this one, it's actually doing the work for me. I'm just going to go sideways across the moustache area, pay particular attention as I do that little space under the nose because uh, make a mistake there and nick the edge of your nose and you know about it don't you you bleed for bloody ever so try to avoid damaging that now on the underside of the chin I'm just going to shave downwards because I shaved upwards on my first pass so very light shaving downwards just allowing the blade to use gravity on its own weight, just to carefully cut off that second pass, that last bit of whiskers that escaped the first pass. Now for me personally, I do have to be careful in the lower area because uh, I do get a little bit of sensitivity around that part of the skin and one doesn't want any lumps and bumps the following day. Although I have to say, when using a safety razor, the likelihood of getting that sensitivity decreases of course. So much better than having to use a cartridge razor in such a situation. I'm being a bit ginger because the light is so bright I can barely see what I'm doing. I see the uh, the material is already, sorry the shaving cream is already dried on the chin. So I'm just going to go over that area again because on my face, so many of uh, the bristles in my chin area coming from all different conflurations on the skin, like a river all coming together at a delta. And uh, there we go. There we go. That's it. That is two passes. That's as far as I normally go. I don't have big wiry bristles. I don't need to shave second pass, third pass, cross the grain, up the grain. I just simply don't have that sort of bristles in the skin so I don't need to do that. So there we go. I'm just going to use a bit of this water now ah, to uh, freshen the skin up. Mm, what a joy. What a joy. Get that stuff off there. Now for me I always enjoy aftershave. Uh, some form of aftershave or cologne. First of all after I've shaved to close those pores give me that super clean sensation and it doesn't matter what it is, to be honest. You know, I don't get too anal about using uh, eau de cologne, eau de parfum, or whatever. I use any old aftershave col uh, cologne. And what I've got here is some. I'm in a bit of a Taylor's World Bond Street mood right now. I've just used their cream, so I'm going to use some of their aftershave as well. And this is number 74 original. They do a couple of different f uh, fragrances in this. I know they do a, a fantastic lime uh, fragrance, which is 
fantastic for the summertime, really citrusy and zesty for the summer. But this number 74 is, um, it's a lot more traditional um, in many ways. Very much uh, has, and I'll just have a sniff of it while I'm talking about it, lemon, lilac, jasmine, but with a I know uh, I've read what's in it, and it, it's meant to have an undertone of uh, of rose and some sort of musks as well. But it's quite old-fashioned smelling, to be honest, and quite prominent. Uh, although it's only a cologne, you know, it doesn't. It's not particularly expensive. Um, it costs about twenty-eight pounds for that one hundred milliliters. I've had this one for years and years because I I own quite a lot of aftershaves. I curate a bit of a collection of them. Um, they come around in rotation not that often, and I have some which I only use in the summertime and this is one of my summertime favorites uh, kept in a, a damp sorry a damp a dark drawer rest of the time to make sure it's kept in good nick mm, there we go the moment of truth how many nicks are there okay i can feel a bit of a zing from here and there but that's just a sign that the shave has gone well in my opinion and that was quite a good one so yeah it's all gone on and it's disappeared into the skin immediately and it, the skin feels great you know, that, those two shaves, two passes. And i got to say, in this light, looking in this mirror, I don't think I've ever seen my skin in more um, vivid close-up in natural light. looks great. So I do, I do like this outdoor shaving station. I can well get into this. Now, I've applied the aftershave lotion. And uh, I have to say, smelling good, feeling good. Now, when I've shaved with a safety razor, I always like to apply some sort of balm afterwards because I know the skin has had a bit of a tuning. Uh, you know, there's nothing natural about running a razor blade over your skin you know you would have a, a beard if we chose not to do that so your skin is not a bigger fan uh, so one of the things i like to do is apply a balm or some form of balm after the astringent uh, phase and today i'm going to use nivea uh, just post shave balm now this has been a really good companion of mine for many years because not only is it really really cost effective you know this bottle here I often see them on special offer in uh, drugstores supermarkets two pounds fifty uh, and you know it's nothing it's nothing for a balm but it, it is also as well as being inexpensive it is incredibly effective I use it all the time almost every day when I'm working if I'm not using you know a better quality one but it absorbs so readily into the skin that it's a great example of something which is not only inexpensive but incredibly effective which from my point of view is uh, is a win-win situation and it absorbs so easily into my skin i give that caveat because i know uh, other people may use this and find it greasy um, because you know everybody's skin is different i have a friend who's not a big fan of nivea i've often extolled its virtues to him and he has said for him it leaves his skin feeling greasy balms which he has recommended to me as being anti-greasy because I, I don't like greasy uh, balms once he've recommended to me i have found greasy so everybody's skin is different this is a game of trial and error and i have to say that one it's gone in already gone in already uh, and the skin feels oh i would say like a baby's bottom but it's been many a year since my son was uh, a young man and i can't remember what his bottom was like to be honest but it feels absolutely great and uh, there we go so that was my uh, shave in the woods well not so much in the woods in the outdoors shall we say now i'd like to um do more of these shaves and use this opportunity to talk about some of the shaving products i use uh, and encounter because i think the joy of safety razor shaving is the fact that there are so many products on the market today that shaving like this has become an absolute pleasure because there are so many different experiences to be had using these products so I'll try and do one of these perhaps a month um, and maybe somewhere different because the beauty of this shaving station is that I can move it around the uh, the property not only that but uh, you know in a pinch I could probably move it somewhere else fit it in the car so we'll see how it goes and uh, we might go on a bit of a shaving tour. Let's, let's see how, it's, uh, how this video series lands with people. If it does, we, we'll get around and we'll have some shaves elsewhere. And uh, we'll explore the country, perhaps, and different parts of the country, and enjoy our joy of double-edged safety, safety razor shaving as we go along. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, don't forget, give me a thumbs up. 
Let me know what you thought. If you want me to do more shaves like this using more products, maybe even suggest products to me and I'll try and source them and uh, incorporate them into this outdoor shaving series. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. It's not just shades. We also like to talk about all sorts of things, especially about self-improvement, personal development, and the old product as well. Because, uh, you know, if one of us comes across something which is a game changer for being a chap, let's not keep it a secret, guys. We're all in this club together. Let's share it. So uh, don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon either out here in the outdoors or somewhere else talking about something else. But whatever, we'll meet again very soon. Until then, please take care, look after yourself and have a good shave.